Over the years, the guidelines for antibiotic prophylaxis for our patients have changed a bit, and I think there's been some confusion surrounding that. So this video is aimed at trying to clear up a little bit of that gray area around when you want to be prescribing prophylactic antibiotics. Now, this is according to the research and the guidelines that have been put out by the American Heart Association and the American Dental Association as of 2017. So times where you might consider giving some prophylactic antibiotics would be times when a patient has had a prosthetic heart valve placed, if they have a history of infective endocarditis, if they've ever had a cardiac transplant and there are valvul valvulopathies associated with that. Maybe they just had a heart defect repaired and it's been no longer than six months after, so you're still within that six month recovery window, they should get prophylaxis. The other time is if you have only a partially repaired congenital heart defect, that's another patient class that should be receiving some antibiotic prophylaxis. So let's say for interest's sake that you remove a tooth on a patient, you're going through the post-op and then suddenly the patient tells you, oh, I forgot to tell you, yeah, I did have that heart surgery uh, you know, a month ago. And you think to yourself, oh my goodness, this is not good. I just took out a tooth and they had heart surgery and say, well, you know, what did you have done? Well, I had a prosthetic heart valve placed in there and it's really cool, it's been working good, I feel great. And you're still thinking to yourself, this is not good, we just extracted this tooth, they're supposed to have prophylaxis for that, what's gonna happen? Well, basically the ADA is suggesting that you can still prescribe prophylaxis even though the procedure's over, as long as they get those drugs in them in a two hour window after the procedure. So this is less than ideal, but it's better than nothing and apparently, according to them, this is still acceptable. So in a case where maybe you haven't updated the medical history or maybe you did and the patient failed to disclose it because they didn't think it was real important because you're working on their teeth, whatever it was, if you find out after, you can still prescribe for them. Now, another common issue that people have is let's say that you saw a patient, they had infection, and maybe you'd prescribed them antibiotics, sent them away, and they come back and now they need some kind of coverage. So they need an antibiotic prophylactic coverage, but they're already taking amoxicillin. So do you give them then another four pills of 500 milligram amoxils, or what do you do? Well, the suggestion is that you should give them a different class of antibiotic than the one that they're currently taking. So an example would be in that case, if they're taking amoxicillin, they've had a course of it up to this period of time, what they should do is they should take two pills of 300 milligram clindamycin, one hour before their appointment, so 600 milligrams of clindamycin. Let's say they were taking clindamycin, well, it would be the opposite. You'd prescribe amoxicillin two grams one hour prior.